Professor Dave and Chegg here. An important concept in organic chemistry is aromaticity. When we refer to a compound as aromatic, we are talking about a structural feature of the molecule. Let's discuss this feature in more detail now, so that we know precisely which molecules are aromatic and which aren't and why, as well as some of their properties. The most common aromatic compound is benzene. This is a cyclic triene. Earlier, when we said aromatic compounds have a fully conjugated, unsaturated ring system, this is what we meant. The pi bonds are degrees of unsaturation, and they are fully conjugated. We are alternating single bond and double bond all the way around the ring. The reason this is important will become clear if we look at the two possible resonance structures. We have this one here, but we can also push each pi bond over by one position, which will produce this other resonance structure. Now remember that discrete resonance structures don't exist, only the composite resonance structure, and that will involve pi electron density being fully delocalized and distributed evenly all around this ring. So it's almost like half a pi bond in between each pair of carbons, making this perfectly symmetrical. This is represented by the dashed line going all the way around the ring, and this is what we meant by fully conjugated. There is no disruption of this pi electron density. It is present everywhere in the ring. So that's what benzene truly looks like, which is why we sometimes draw benzene like this, with a circle instead of three pi bonds, because it is actually more accurate. We know this is the case because benzene is indeed highly symmetrical in this manner, rather than consisting of discrete single and double bonds of varying lengths. And aromaticity is a property that contributes to the high stability of benzene. So benzene will indeed be aromatic, but what other molecules are aromatic? Let's go over the rules for aromaticity so that we can identify a wide variety of molecules as being aromatic. First, an aromatic ring must be fully planar. That means that we can't have any carbons that are strictly sp3 hybridized. So while benzene is aromatic, if we took away a pi bond, this would no longer be aromatic for several reasons. One of which is that these sp3 carbons are not planar. They are tetrahedral. The second reason that this would not be aromatic constitutes the second requirement for aromaticity. The system must be fully conjugated. If we take a pi bond away from benzene, it is no longer fully conjugated. Even though there is some delocalization, there is still a portion of the molecule that has no pi electron density. The same goes for this other diene, where the pi bonds are completely localized, so these two carbons do not possess any pi electron density. Now the third rule is the one that's a bit more abstract. If a system is planar and fully conjugated, it will still have to satisfy Huckel's rule. This says that the number of pi electrons that specifically make up the delocalized system has to be equal to the expression 4n plus 2, where n can be any integer. So for any integer you can plug into this expression, it will give us a number of pi electrons that satisfies Huckel's rule. If we plug in 0, we get 2. If we plug in 1, we get 6. If we plug in 2, we get 10. So a system with two delocalized pi electrons is aromatic. That would be like this three-membered ring with one pi bond and a cation. The pi bond contains two pi electrons, and we can push this pi bond around the ring by resonance, so this is aromatic. A system with six delocalized pi electrons is aromatic. That would be like benzene with its three pi bonds, each with two electrons. A system with ten delocalized pi electrons is aromatic. That would be like naphthalene with five pi bonds delocalized around this polycyclic structure. So in the end, we can just memorize two, six, 10, and going up by 4s from there. So with these rules down, we should be able to identify any molecule as being aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. If a molecule satisfies all of the criteria, it is aromatic, like benzene. This is cyclic, flat, fully conjugated, and has a number of delocalized pi electrons that satisfies Huckel's rule. Aromatic compounds are especially stable. If a molecule satisfies most of these criteria in that it is cyclic, flat, and fully conjugated, but it does not satisfy Huckel's rule, having a number of delocalized pi electrons that is equal to 4n instead of 4n plus 2, it will be anti-aromatic. 
This is something like cyclobutadiene with its four pi electrons. So it's like it almost qualified as being aromatic, it just doesn't satisfy Huckel's rule. Anti-aromatic compounds are relatively unstable. And if a molecule fails to satisfy any of these other criteria, it is simply non-aromatic. If it's not cyclic, obviously it's not aromatic. If it isn't fully conjugated, same thing. If it's not flat, again, it can't be aromatic, and this can sometimes be difficult to predict. Take cyclooctatetraene. This seems like it would be flat like a stop sign, but in fact, because it has 8 pi electrons, it would end up being anti-aromatic. So to escape this instability, it will adopt a tub-like conformation, and because it is therefore not flat, this is non-aromatic. With these rules down, let's look at a few more aromatic compounds. Take something like the cyclopentadienyl anion. Because of the conjugation, this is actually aromatic. We can push this negative charge all around the ring, and we do have six pi electrons that are delocalized between the lone pair and the two pi bonds, so this should make sense. In addition, there are many heterocycles that are aromatic. Heterocycles is a term that means that at least one of the atoms that comprises the ring is not carbon. Here are some examples of aromatic heterocycles that contain nitrogen, oxygen, or even sulfur. With these, lone pairs on the heteroatoms can be part of the delocalized pi system if they are required, and those will contribute to the count towards Huckel's rule. So with these examples, each has six delocalized pi electrons, which will sometimes include a lone pair on a heteroatom, such as with furan, and sometimes will not, such as with pyridine. So we should now understand a bit about aromaticity, and we should be able to identify whether a molecule is aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. But more importantly, we will now be looking at a wide variety of reactions that benzene and its derivatives can undergo. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.